Hello friends and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, let's start with the continuing session of the characteristics of element in this session. So far in the discussion, we have already covered valence electron, valencies and size of atom in the past sessions. So today we shall start with the metallic character of an element where we'll be learning about how they varies with respect to group and period. So let's start with the session. Friends, before starting with the metallic characters, we should first know what are metals and non-metals. As in the classification of element, today some 117 chemical elements are known, but only 103 out of them are well characterized. The systematic classification of these 103 elements reveals that 90 elements are solid, 2 are in liquid and 11 are in gaseous states. So if I talk about the metals, 79 of them are metals, 17 are non-metals and 7 are metalloids. Friends, metal differs from non-metals in many respects. So in fact, Metals and non-metals are too extreme as regard to their properties. Metal occupy bulk of the periodic table, while non-metal elements can only be found on the right-hand side of the periodic table. You also see the diagonal line drawn from boron to polonium, separating metals from non-metals. Where most of the elements on this line are metalloids, we also call them semiconductors because these element exhibits electrical property intermediate to both conductors and insulators. So friends, let's understand now what are metals and non-metals. So what are the metals? Metals are the element which are opaque, lustrous and good conductor of heat and electricity. And what are non-metals? They are nothing but very brittle, exist in two states out of three states, and they do not reflect light. Now if we segregate into physical and chemical properties of non-metals and metals, we can tabulate them in some properties like Metal are good electrical and heat conductors. They are malleable in nature. They are ductile. They possess metallic luster. They are opaque as thin sheet. And they are solid at the room temperature. Now we talk about the non-metals. Non-metals are yes, poor conductors. They are brittle if a solid. They are non-ductile. They do not possess any metallic luster and they are very transparent when they are into thin sheet and yes they are solid or gas in a room temperature now if i talk about the chemical property of these two elements the metals and non-metals metals have one to three electrons in their outermost shell whereas in non-metals they are four to eight electrons in the outermost shell Metals can lose electron easily, but non-metals can gain and share electrons. Metals are formed oxides that are basic in nature. Non-metals form oxides that are acidic in nature. Metals are basically good reducing agent, whereas the non-metals are good oxidizing agent. Metals also have lower electronegativity whereas non-metal have higher electronegativity. Now friends, let's understand the metallic character with respect to group and period. First, let's understand on the basis of period. Well, on moving from left to right in a period, the metallic character of an element decreases. That is, non-metallic character increases. So on the left side in the period we have metals and on the right side we have non-metals and some element in between metals and non-metals are metalloids. We also call them semiconductors. So I have taken here the example of third period of the periodic table where we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium as in metals, the property of silicon, 
are in between of those of metals and nonmetals. So therefore, they are metalloids. And the next element, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, are nonmetals. So the metallic character decreases from sodium to magnesium to aluminium. And the silicon is a metalloid, and the non-metal characteristics increasing from phosphorus to sulfur to chlorine. So in the third period of the periodic table, sodium is the most metallic element, whereas chlorine is the most non-metallic element. Now we can say that the greatest metallic character is found in the element on the extreme right left side of the period. And the greatest non-metallic character is found in the element on the right side of the period. So now let's understand on the basis of group. So when we go down top to bottom in a group, in the periodic table, the metallic character of the element increases. For example, when we move down, in a group 1, in the periodic table, you can see here I have given a group 1 elements like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. With the respective symbols, we can see here the metallic character increasing when we move from top to bottom in a group. So thus, you can see here the least metallic element is the lithium and the francium is the most metallic element in the same group. So obviously the greatest metallic character is found in the element in the lowest part of the group. Instead of using the term metallic character, we can also use them as an electropositive character, which we we'll shall discuss in the future slides. So friends, let's keep in mind about some points that metallic character decreases when we move from left to right in a period. On moving left to right in the, the electropositive character of element decreases. Now in terms of group, when we move downwards, the metallic property of the element increases. And when we move downwards, the group, the electropositive character of the element increases. Now I shall conclude with respect to groups and periods. In the periodic table, you can see here the pivot of the periodic table where I have concluded that the metallic character increases when we go move from top to bottom in a group and metallic character decreases when we move from left to right in the horizontal periods. So friends, I hope you have understood the session. So, in next session, we shall discuss about the chemical reactivity of the element with respect to group and period. Thanks for watching EduPedia World videos.